untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Ragavan and Nimble Pilfer, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon, although I'll admit I was tempted to try this out myself. The 1 mana 2 1 legendary monkey pirate says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library. Until end of turn, you may cast that card. So we cannot play lands from exile, but we can cast spells. And of course, the treasure tokens can fix our mana to potentially cast spells that aren't red, so that's also very important. And then we can also dash Ragavan for one on red, in which case it will enter the battlefield with haste, and at the beginning of the next end step we have to put it back into our hand. So that can be a nice way to circumvent sorcery speed removal, or guarantee get a hidden with Ragavan and get your value. So since we have Ragavan as our commander, we don't need to include a ton of one mana creatures since we can always just play our commander on turn one. What we do need is some cheap removal, especially for the mirror match, which has become quite popular. So you want some one mana answers for opposing Ragavans, including a Flame Blast Bolt. Frostbite to go with our Snow Covered Mountains can often deal three damage. Of course, a staple Lightning Bolt. We've got a Play With Fire, Strangle which is a 3 damage sorcery, and then Voltage Surge, which also has great synergy with the treasures from Ragavan. Since we have a 1 mana commander, Mox Amber is also a must-have, as it will often give us a nice mana boost early on. And then we also have Sticky Fingers, alongside Cliffhaven Kite Sail, as a ways to give Ragavan evasion early on, to make sure it can keep connecting, even if the opponent has multiple blockers back. And then moving on to 2 mana, there's more removal with a Braid, which can also take out artifacts, and Lightning Strike dealing 3 to any target, and finally Obliterating Bolt can deal 4 to a creature or Planeswalker, exiling it in the process. There are a few powerful alchemy alternatives that deal 4 damage at 2 mana, so you could play those if you're interested in including those alchemy cards as well. And then there's some powerful creatures we can play at 2 mana, including ways of making sure Ragavan can keep attacking by preventing blockers. There's Earthshaker Kenra, as well as the Radas Firebrand, which can also make it difficult for the opponent to block. Then Akari Zaf makes another Ragavan. Of course, the legendary rule doesn't apply here since it's a differently named Ragavan, but also a powerful 2 drop in any red deck. We've got the Lizard Blades, can also be quite fun with Ragavan, giving a double strike allows us to hit the opponent twice, make two treasures, exile two cards. And then Magda can also synergize with a treasure theme, potentially searching up a dragon if we make enough of those treasures. And then Robber of the Rich, another way of playing cards from the opponent's library. Rahilda from the Alchemy Expansion, another card that does a similar job. And then at 2 mana we've got some ramp artifacts as well with Arcane Signet. Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone, because the opponent's often gonna take out Ragavan early on, so then having the extra mana to replay it more easily can be important, and we're also trying to ramp into some big powerful plays. And then Ornithopter of Paradise, a creature that can also make extra mana, and then making one mana of any color, also useful when we're exiling cards from the opponent's library with Ragavan. And then I'm also liking Zenith Chronicler in this monocolor deck as it can punish the opponent for casting multicolor spells as we get to draw a card. Now it could potentially come back to bite us if we exile a multicolor spell with Ragavan, or maybe something like a Robber of the Rich, but if that's the case we're probably winning anyways. And then one of the advantages of playing with Ragavan is that we can potentially play a 3-drop on turn 2 already thanks to that treasure. So that's why including some powerful 3-mana creatures is important, especially ones without haste, because of course we lose the benefit of haste if we're playing our creature's second main phase. So cards like Comet Celebrant are great here, potentially letting us take an extra attack step. And the Garrison recently introduced in the remastered expansion, a 2-3, that when it attacks creates two 1-1 red human creature tokens that are also tapped and attacking, so the damage can pile on very quickly, although Garrison can feel a bit sluggish if we just have to cast it for 3 mana on turn 3, so getting to play it turn 2 feels like a huge upside. And then we're also playing with the Battlements in our mana base, also pretty decent in its own right, giving creatures haste, but we can potentially melt the pair into the Township, which can also be very fun when we can make that happen. And then additional 3 drops include Bone Crusher Giant, even though we're typically using the 2 mana Stomp Adventure first. Captain Lannery, another source of extra treasure tokens, can also increase its power when sacrificing treasures, which can be quite nice alongside Ragavan. We've got Fable of the Mirror Breaker, another incredibly powerful 3 drop that also benefits from being cast on turn 2. We've got the Blade Reforged, which can also generate additional card advantage whenever it attacks. 
got the face breaker another great card to play on turn two as we get to make additional treasures when we hit the opponent and then we can sacrifice treasures for extra card advantage there's a reckless storm seeker to give creatures haste then a subira also has excellent synergy with ragavan as we can make it unblockable so we can guarantee hitting the opponent and potentially also use subira's second ability to draw extra cards after discarding our hand annex still powerful in any red deck especially if we can pair it with an ember cleave at some point there's a Chandra, which can also generate extra mana, so also great to play on turn 2, so it can help us ramp into more expensive cards on the following turn. We've got Nahiri's Warcrafting as a 5 damage sorcery that can also potentially provide a bit of card advantage. Seasoned Pyromancer, excellent if we can play it when empty-handed to just draw 2 cards, but even when played early it can generate a few elemental tokens. Fumeral, another reason to include those snow-covered mountains, as we can generate extra colorless mana after casting it, which we can maybe use to play some of our artifacts or activate our abilities. And then a Goblin Chain Whirler, another staple in any red deck, dealing 1 damage to each opposing creature, planeswalker, and player. And then we've got some ramp artifacts with Chromatic Lantern, another way to fix our mana to cast spells in other colors that we exile with Ragavan, Heraldic Banner, naming red to pump up our entire team, Got a few swords as well, great mana sinks to have, and ways to give Ragavan evasion against the right colors, and Forge and Frontier quite powerful in its own right without needing any additional synergies. Sword of a once and future can also be quite nice with our cheaper burn spells that we get to replay out of our graveyard. And then the Celeste is another great ramp artifact, giving us some card selection. And then moving on to four mana, there's Torbran, doesn't need an introduction. Got Koth, Fire of Resistance to get extra mountains, deal damage, and eventually get an emblem. Defiler of Instinct also helps us empty our hand while dealing damage at the same time. Chandra, Torch of Defiance, another great planeswalker that can protect itself, taking out an opposing creature right away, can make extra mana or provide card advantage. And then the Crone War can also be quite devastating in the right matchup, stealing an opposing creature to get it out of the way so we can keep attacking, and then eventually destroying some of the opponent's creatures as well if they're tapped. And then we've got some uh, new additions at 5 mana with a Zealous Conscript. Can potentially steal an opposing permanent, including a Planeswalker and ultimate it on the spot. Or can just steal a creature so we can attack with it right away. We've got a Glorybringer, which can also exert to deal 4 damage to a non-dragon creature right away. We've got a Goldspan Dragon, also great with all the treasure synergies, making extra mana. Or a Brask the Hidden to give our entire team haste while tapping down opposing creatures. And then topping off our curve, there's Morag to give us additional attack steps, also benefits from being ramped out, so we still have a few lands in hand to enable landfall, just make sure to play your land in your second main phase, so you actually get to untap your creatures. Then there's Inferno of the Star Mounts, which can come in with haste and deal a ton of damage in the air, also has fire breathing as another mana sink. And then Itali also benefits from gaining haste, so we can immediately attack with it and exile the top card of each player's library to cast for free. And then Ember Cleave, a great finisher in any red deck as well. And then the mana base has a few goodies, including Shatter Skull Smashing, which can be a removal spell or land. Both Spire of Industry and Mana Confluence can also make additional colors to help with Ragavan. Nykthos, if we have a lot of devotion, can also give us a mana boost. And then Mutavolt and Faceless Haven, excellent creature lands, especially against the more controlling decks. And then Access Tunnel, another way of potentially making Ragavan unblockable. Crucible to make some hasty 1-1s. Battlements we've already covered. And then Den, another excellent creature land. And Castle Embereth to pump the team. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, so it's going to be a tough matchup against Control, but our hand's not bad, so I'll keep. And hope our Ragavan gets to connect a few times. Mindstone to help her ramp into a Goldspan Dragon, could also come in handy. Opponent with a Search for Skanta, so Ragavan's good to go. And a commit to memory we won't be able to cast right now. But yeah, next turn we could already threaten a Goldspan Dragon. Opponent might have a counter spell available here. So maybe instead of tapping out for Goldspan, I want to play a Robber. And our opponent's going to neutralize it. Alright, happy we didn't tap out for a 5-drop. Still get to connect with Ragavan. And a disallow another 3-mana counter. So 
So we've got three cards in graveyard for search for Ascanta purposes. Once again, our opponent's got a bunch of mana untapped. Although now we could consider animating Den of the Bugbear, which I kind of like. Creature lands require some pretty specific answers out of the control deck. Swords for Raghavan makes sense, but do they have an answer for Den? And while removal typically doesn't shine against a control deck, at least Frostbite and Bolt can also target the opponent's Planeswalker. So next turn if they tap out for Teferi might be a good window to resolve a Goldspan Dragon. Their opponent's stuck on four lanes. Alright, so now we've got an interesting decision. We can play or even dash Ragavan. Could go for a Goldspan Dragon. Given our opponent hasn't hit their fifth land drop, their hands must have some more answers or counter spells here. So maybe I prefer just activating Den again. Also possible our opponent kept an answer on top for answering Den. Maybe something like a Wandering Emperor to exile it. A Ragavan can be dashed for a total of four mana here. Or we can cast it for three after animating Den. Yeah, let's try that instead. Okay, cast Ragavan. And then we still have the mana to play Goldspan next turn. Opponent rewinds, untapping their lands in the process. Sure. And now Surge could transform, giving them an extra mana source, but no opponent wants to keep the card on top. So it must have been a good one. Animate Den once again, although I wouldn't be able to play a Garrison afterwards. Also have Castle, which we can maybe activate to pump up our goblins now. So let's say we activate Castle, then I can still play Garrison afterwards. That might be a good compromise. So let's play this first. That resolves. And attack. Opponent did have a Wandering Emperor after all. So glad we didn't attack with a den here. Opponent makes a Samurai, although... Yeah, we could still pump Castle and uh, take out the Samurai. Or we could use both Burn Spells to deal with the Samurai and the Wandering Emperor. I think we let them block and just use Castle. Opponent falls to 10. And our opponent's still not flipping Ascanta since they found a land to maybe cast a fairy here. So now the big question is, does our opponent have two mana interaction that they can keep up after untapping? If we can resolve a Goldspan Dragon, we're going to be in a great position. And then I would still have some of my instants available. So I think we have to give it a shot. Alternatively, I can attack and then use Castle after getting additional 1-1s. One which could also be quite powerful. Well, let's just go with the Goldspan. We've waited long enough. That resolves. Move to attackers. And then opponent is at 10. So we could just try to end the game here instead of uh, going after Teferi. Which is not something I would typically advise doing, but let's go for it. And then we can use our treasure to activate Castle Emberth as well. So we can Frostbite the Samurai and then still activate our castle. Thanks to the extra mana from Goldspan. GG's.
And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Torbrain, so the mono red mirror match. And having two cheap removal spells could be nice. Hopefully, our opponent can't answer Ragavan early, but not counting on it. They might have mulligans specifically to find one mana answers. So far, so good. Best case scenario, they just play a blocker that we can take out. But nope, Bone Crusher to stomp Ragavan, one of the better answers. Mindstone's not bad. And an idle one we can take out pretty easily. So probably find two bolts idle on and then play Ragavan once again. And then if our opponent plays a Bone Crusher next turn, we can Frostbite to take it out. And then we also have Subira to potentially make Ragavan unblockable. Three mana. And it's going to be in a braid. Also could have hit our Mindstone. Alright, so Ragavan's not happening anytime soon, unless we want to try once again here. And then if our opponent plays Torbran, we can take it out with two burn spells or use Subira. Sure. Steamkin's fine. Is this removal spell number three? It sure is. Okay. Gotta change game plan here. Warcrafting's not bad, although I might want to save it as an answer to Torbrain. So for now, maybe Voltage Surge, Steamkin, get in for two. And there's Torbrain. So before playing land I could Warcrafting, although now Obliterating Bolt also a nice answer. Kinda still like Warcrafting since we're pretty likely to exile something we can play, whether it's a land or a spell that costs up to 4 mana. And land will do. Get in for 2. And then next turn we can potentially replay Ragavan once again. Annex we can also Frostbite. And Stormseeker. So, have to decide which one to take out. I'm guessing Frostbite on Annex and then take some damage from Stormseeker potentially. Next turn we can Bolt it. Gonna hang on to my Mindstone. And then we also can't forget about Subira's ability. Okay. So let's see here. Could hang on to Bolt for Torbrain, which is coming up soon. Yeah, I think we'll just play Ragavan anyway instead of waiting for an extra mana. And hit for two. Hope her opponent just replays Torbrain, which we can answer once again, even though we'll take a bunch of damage here. Down to 8 we go. Lannery is nice too. So maybe we should start by just attacking with Lannery, see what we exile. Or we could look to Activate Subira. Yeah, that could also work. Just um, forego the land turn, bolt Torbrain, activate Subira, attack with two of my creatures, and I get to draw two cards plus the Ragavan card. Yeah, that seems good. Oh, 
found a seasoned pyromancer, which will refresh our hands nicely. And a lightning bolt, a clean answer to Reckless Stormseeker, but we can hang on to it for now. Karizev is fine. So before our opponent moves to beginning of combat, we want to take out Stormseeker. And there's a Bone Crusher at long last. So now the only drawback of uh, playing my banner is that I can no longer count on Subira's ability to make my creatures unblockable. Could also activate Subira's second ability once again. Maybe attacking with all three creatures. Is that greedy? Does leave me a little bit vulnerable on the way back, perhaps. Torbrand still costing 8 mana, so they could already play it with another land. So, close call. I think we just send these two, and then I might be okay with playing Den, discarding Banner. Although Banner, pumping Pyromancer makes it easier to block the Giant. So, yeah, let's just send these two. See what we exile. Firebrand's not bad. And play banner. Probably shouldn't have tapped the Mindstone here in case I wanted to sacrifice it end of turn. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Sithis, an enchantment deck. And we've got a Keeper. Got our Frostbite as an early answer to Sithis. And then Mindstone to keep on ramping into some of our bigger spells. Don't expect too many 1-mana answers, maybe a Swords to Plowshares. But most enchantment removal starts at 2-mana. Steamkin's nice, so let's hit, see what we exile. And a Mox Amber is definitely one of our best possible hits. So, how about a Mind Stone into Steamkin here? Still have a Frostbite available. But we might as well untap since we can still cast it next turn with our treasure. So here I'm liking Robber plus Frostbite. And I'm not going to use my treasure to activate Mutavolt. And our opponent has seen enough, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, up against Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, the new 4-mana version. And it's a pretty popular and powerful deck. Our hand seems decent, if Ragavan can survive to provide mana with Mox Amber. Swords can be handy against uh, a creature that's also green. So play Ragavan, and then I should also play Moxhammer to keep a bolt. Alright, we get to untap. Could already play a Chain Whirler, although potentially more interested in playing Sword here. But I should maybe start by attacking. Cold Steel Hearts, not bad either. So let's play that. And then, don't need to name red here, can name one of the opponent's colors. And what's most likely to be useful, maybe exiling like a removal spell, so we'll name black. And then I can play mountain, or I can play tapped smashing. Keeping up a braid could have its advantages, sure. Opponent does nothing. Okay, more removal to add to our hand. Now we can also play Koth to find more mountains. 
But once again, can attack first as opposed to playing an equipping sword, which could be a little sketchy if our opponent picked up some removal. So let's play Koth, and don't want to waste any treasures if I can help it. But this still works. That opponent's got the tail's end, unfortunately. Could still tap out for sword, which seems fine. Get that in play. A lantern can be abraded. Start by equipping sword and see what we find. Could have left the cold steel heart untapped, I suppose, but we'll have plenty of ways to spend our mana this turn. Okay, yeah, with, uh, with the untapped cold steel heart, I could have played Tasha. Don't think I'm gonna be too sad about it. Can abraid the lantern. Slow down the opponent's mana development, and then play Pyromancer. And then Pyromancer, discard Flame Blast Bolt, and Arada's Firebrand, perhaps. Make some 1-1s, one -ones. play a land. And we've got a nice clean answer for Atraxa if that shows up. Gonna be a Teferi Master of Time. Can potentially phase out Ragavan. Although Banner's a great pickup alongside Season Pyromancer. So now I'm expecting them to phase out Ragavan. Although probably no downside to keeping Cold Steel Heart untapped. Let's move to Attackers. So Teferi's gonna most likely minus three. Could send just a one elemental at it. Although if they then decide to plus one instead, goes up to five loyalty, then I guess sending two elementals is safest and we can finish it off with a Chain Whirler. But now they're definitely gonna phase out Ragavan. Nope, opponent still draws and discards. Exiled an Embercleave, although that's going to be a bit pricey here. Although I actually could have put a stop in the end of combat phase, which is not often used, but then our creatures would have still been declared as attackers to play Embercleave on the cheap, so that's potentially one way to get around the awkwardness of playing its second main. Chain Warlord to finish off Teferi. And Atraxa by herself is not going to cut it. Ball to clear a path. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw in the mirror match, but we seem to have a fine hand, I think. No removal for Ragavan, but we can just trade early. And hope the opponent doesn't have removal. Turn two Steamkins, nice. Definitely trade for Chronicler when given the chance. In this matchup, it's just going to be a 3 1. A Lannery is nice too. So we'll trade here. And then a Frostbite, a nice clean answer. So now what we can do is play Captain Lannery, and then with the treasure. Before blockers, we can take out Steamkin. Assuming the opponent doesn't have a one mana instant here. Opponent replays Ragavan with dash. So it gets to hit us right away. Exiling a land. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So now I get to attack, play Chandra, and maybe play a Fable afterwards. Listen, pal. I'm with 
Could also replay Ragavan, but uh, yeah, close call. Let's go with a Fable. Can maybe dash Ragavan later. A braid kills our shaman. And there's Ragavan dashed once again. Going face. Itali exiled. That's not gonna get cast here. And a Warcrafting, not bad. Kills Captain Lannery. Finds a Strangle, which can still go after Chandra. All their opponent had to use all their treasure. Okay, some of my cards in hand are a tad awkward, with her opponent not exposing anything to the Akron War. So let's maybe discard that one, and then Mutavolt could also go, hoping to find more spells. Alright, bunch of ramp. But uh, let's see here, Chandra makes mana. Can play Banner and then cast Ragavan. And then if they want to trade for their Ragavan, that's fine. Opponent dashes and plays a war boss. So now we get to Glorybringer kill war boss. This keeps making mana. So can't quite go Steamkin into Glorybringer, but we can go Mindstone into Glorybringer. A reflection blocks the 1 1. Opponent replays Ragavan with Dash. Yeah, in this case, we'll just uh, protect Chandra and keep our Reflection. Pretty powerful with Glorybringer. Hope they don't exile a removal spell, just a land. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we're going to get to copy Glorybringer next turn, and that should be game. On to the next one. Okay, out with the old, in with the new. Rusko versus Ragavan. And we've got a solid hand. A Lightning Bolt, a nice one-mana answer here. And hopefully Ragavan gets to connect so we can play one of our three drops ahead of schedule. Alright, never mind. Just play a Firebrand. Opponents opting to the bottom. And Kind of liking the face breaker now. Get to make a treasure right away. And then we can potentially bolt Rusko in response to the trigger before they can keep up one mana interaction. Alright, Karn can shut down our treasures. So I might be better off floating the red mana here. Karn's gonna plus. So sure, we'll just bolt Karn, even though I could keep it for Rusko. And then... Let's see here, maybe Stormseeker. Over Ragavan, and then next turn we can maybe dash it. Alright, Shadow's Verdict to wipe the board, unfortunately. But now we can dash a Ragavan, or we could cast it, put a Sticky Fingers on it to try and next or maybe play Pyromancer after bolting Rusko. That's also an option. I think I kind of like the uh, dash here. I 
Also can't forget about Faceless Haven. Pick up Ragavan again. Okay, step one, Bolt Rusko. Opponent counters, but gives us a swan in return. So a few options here. Could play Ragavan, put a sticky fingers on it, and then play Pyromancer to refuel. Could also get in with a Faceless Haven. Now let's go with a Ragavan line. Don't really want to dash Ragavan and put a sticky fingers on it, because then it's going to fall off. So we get to draw two. Okay. Put on Brainstorms. And let's see if they picked up some more answers. Storefront's gonna shuffle away the cards they left on top with Brainstorm. Or at least the one card they left on top. And a Wish Claw can search for any card here. Opponent's gonna go for it right away, so they know what they're looking for. Maybe something giving our team minus two minus two would make sense. Uh, Elspeth's Nightmare for Ragavan. Get to draw Sticky Fingers and Lightning Strike and deal with Rusko. Okay, so what's next here? A Lightning Strike Rusko. So we don't lose a Lightning Strike to the Nightmare. I don't know if I want to empty my hand of creatures, or if I want to get in with some of my creature lands instead. Start here. Could also Wish Claw for like a Torbrain, although probably want more red creatures in play. There's a few other powerful cards we can find with it, of course. Morog comes to mind to take an extra attack step. But how about we just play Magda, and then get in with the Mutavolts. And then Wish Claw will have to activate during my turn. So, don't necessarily want to give it back to the opponent unless we can guarantee a kill. Yeah, playing Kenra is certainly an option. Get in for two extra damage. And then I still have my creature lands to maybe finish the job. Mutavolt also pumped by Magda, making a treasure. That's a pretty nice synergy. And same can be said for Faceless Haven. Also has all creature types, including Dwarf. Midnight Clock still needs a few more counters to refresh the opponent's hand. Time Warp to take an extra turn, always powerful. Although they didn't do a whole lot else in that turn, luckily. Just getting one more counter on the Midnight Clock. Thanks, selling our graveyard. Not too relevant here. So there's Rusko once again. Get to untap. And I have to imagine we can get something with a Wish Claw here to end the game. Could get something like an Ember Cleave. That sounds pretty appealing. The Uncounterable Inferno also definitely an option, although the concern there is just spot removal. So let's go with Embercleave, Animate Mutavolts, Animate Faceless Haven.
opponent counters the Haven trigger. Fair enough. Get in with everyone. We'll still get some treasure. As you play this Ember Cleave. Could also activate Cancel. And that does it. Awesome. Beat Rusko. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Jacob Hawken, which can be a pretty powerful deck. So, yeah, we've got a Keeper. Even though we don't have any removal, turn 1 Ragavan should have a decent time attacking into Jacob. And then giving protection from blue, also very relevant in this matchup. So our opponent's going to try and ramp into the... 6 man ability here to be able to cast a bunch of expensive spells for free. For now, sword versus playing the blade is a close call. Probably prefer just playing sword and then get the benefit from haste next turn, but then we have the flexibility of also just equipping the sword. Especially relevant if our opponent's playing some auras to shut down our commander, which I've seen in the Jacob deck before. Now maybe fine to just play blade or forged. Get the ball rolling. And then next turn we can double spell or maybe even play our dragon. Alright, and summon bounces Ragavan. And a Celestus leaves up one mana, but now Ragavan's in hand, so they can't counter it with the uh, one mana counter. So next up, maybe just play a robber and then equip the sword. And not sure which we prefer to equip. Mindstone and Guardian Idol both can go. There's Jacob. Three mana left. And an Urabrask is next. So on the one hand we could tap out for Goldspan. There's a chance it gets countered. Could also attack first, see what we exile with the Blade or Forge in case we hit another land or a spell we can cast. And take it from there. And then uh, we'll see if we want to tap out second main for one of our five drops. Mox Amber is nice. We have a legendary. Opponent falls all the way to three. And a lightning strike seems nice. Anax could see keeping on top. So we could go upstairs and just end the game here, but let's see what happens if we take out Jacob instead and get another turn. Alright, fine. Let's just win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's another mirror match, and we've got a solid hand. A Ragavan and a Frostbind to kill the opponents. So if they just play their own commander on turn 1, we can answer it and add a Curry Zeph to the board at the very least. Opponent mulligans, so they might be looking for some cheap answers. I'll play the Snow-Covered Mountain in case we need to enable Frostbite early on, although playing it then turn 2 might still be best. Looks like our opponent mulligan into a one mana removal spell, fair enough. Can still play a Karizaf, so not a bad backup plan. And there's an Abrade. Okay. Yeah, let's just play a three mana Ragavan. Opponent could try and dash theirs, although Frostbite can eventually catch it. Alright, Fumarole, can they follow it up with an artifact, perhaps? They can, Arcane Signet, not bad. And a dash to Rangavan. So yeah, despite a Mulgan, our opponent's off to a decent start here. 
play face breaker keep up frostbite and a chandra heart of fire is next can deal two damage with the second plus one Probably still best to hang on to Frostbite. Found a land, so now Orobrask. Pretty nice counter to Ragavan since it will enter tapped. So let's just take out Chandra. Alright, so Awakened Inferno is next. So I can kill one of my two creatures. Kind of excited to play a hasty Atali thanks to Orbrask. So our opponent's likely gonna take care of it. So now Glorybringer goes face and Facebreaker finishes off Chandra. We get to make a treasure to keep a Frostbite. Alternative involves Chandra, but uh, this seems fine. And then no need to exert. Alright, so yeah, we got to see our Ragavan Brawl deck in action. And I think the deck's already been demoted to the Hell queue in the meantime, so I kind of missed the window of uh, playing Ragavan against regular decks. But even in the quote unquote Hell queue facing all these powerful commanders, Ragavan can hold its own and seems to be one of the best decks in the format. So definitely recommend giving it a try if you're looking for a powerful Brawl deck that gets to play with a sweet one mana commander. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.